Shalom, this is your Jewish connection, and I'm Rabbi Stewart, your host. And uh, if I sound a little bit like I have a cold, that's because I do. And so, excuse me if I sound a little like that sometimes. But anyway, have you ever wondered about what the purpose of life is, what your purpose is? You know, you were born into this world for such a time as this, and God has great purpose for your life. Stay tuned. For such a time as this has become kind of a famous expression. And uh, I want to go back about 2,400 years in history to find that place in history where it kind of originated and perhaps is the most famous place that it was ever uttered. We're back in the Persian Empire 2,400 years ago. It was the mightiest empire of its time. The king of Persia, his name was Ahasuerus or Xerxes. He was kind of a party guy, I guess, and uh, his wife didn't party the way he liked, so he rejected her for her disobedience, and he began to look for a new one. Now, Esther was a beautiful—her name was Hadassah in Hebrew. She's a beautiful young Jewish woman in his empire. Uh, She was brought up by her uncle Mordecai because her parents had passed away, and because of her beauty and charm, she became— the queen. Now, God had a plan in all this, but uh, we're going to watch this unfold here. Esther did not reveal to the king her Jewish identity at the time that she became queen. Now, there was a guy in uh, the king's court by the name of Haman. He was a fierce hater of the Jews, and he influenced King Ahasuerus, King Xerxes, to murder all of the Jewish people in his kingdom. By the way, some of you may know that uh, Persia is modern-day Iran. In 1935, the Iranian government requested that those countries which it had diplomatic relations with, they requested that they call Persia Iran, which is the name of the country in the Persian language. The suggestion for the change is said to have come from the Iranian ambassador to Germany, who came under the influence of the Nazis. Interesting to note that modern-day Iran, the government of modern-day Iran, is perhaps the most anti-Israel government on the earth, promising, vowing, to drive all the Jews into the sea. Could be the same anti-Semitic spirit working through the ages, the same one in Haman of Persia and the Iranian government leaders of today. Back to the story. Mordecai, as you know, he's Esther's uncle. He was a Jewish man of faith and courage. And he did not look out only for himself. Good example for all of us. We should not be looking out only for ourselves. He was looking out for others. He was looking out for all of the Jewish people that lived in that empire in that time. He challenged and encouraged Esther with these famous words when Haman had convinced the king to wipe out all the Jews in his empire. You can find these words in Esther, the book of Esther, which is found in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, chapter 4, verse 14. I'm going to read it to you. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. Can you hear the challenge, and can you hear the faith in God? And then he says, but you and your father's family will perish. In other words, if she's silent. And who knows? Then he kind of gives a a kind of almost prophetic understanding of God orchestrating in the history of man. Who knows? but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Now, Esther took his words to heart, and she demonstrated faith in God 
and a good degree in, of wisdom by calling all of the Jewish people to fast and pray for her and the situation. Then after three days, she mustered up courage and she risked her life for the sake of her Jewish people for such a time as this. By the way, sometimes we think of courage as as lack of fear, but that's not really accurate because all of us get afraid at some times. We have fear in our lives in different situations and different circumstances. Courage is actually the overcoming of fear and acting despite what we're afraid of. So God used Esther's faith and courage, and then he gave her a little more wisdom on how to approach the king because if you didn't approach the king right and he didn't hold out his scepter and you came uninvited, even if you were his king, there was only one rule. It was the law, death. And so Esther had wisdom. She approached the king, and then she had some more wisdom on how to present her request. And the king granted her request for her Jewish people. And interestingly and ironically, Haman, the one who wanted to murder all the Jews, the one who hated the Jews, he was ironically hung on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai because he hated Mordecai more than he did all the other Jews. Now, Purim commemorates how the God of Israel, who is the God of heaven and earth, the creator, how God orchestrated events in human history to preserve his chosen nation, the people of Israel. And you might say, well, they're not my people. Well, if you're a follower of Yeshua, Jesus, they are your people because you've actually been grafted in the Bible says, and you have entered into the faith and the inheritance that came through our physical father, Jewish people's physical father, Abraham, and your spiritual father, the father of faith. And hey, you know, if the Jewish people were completely wiped out, guess what? Yeshua, Jesus, came through the Jewish people. And the devil has known from the beginning our spiritual enemy, Hasetan, the devil, has known from the beginning that God has a special purpose for the Jewish people in the history of mankind. Not that Jewish people are better than anyone else, not that Jewish people are worse than anyone else. It's just God's plan. And, uh, you know, I made a decision a long time ago, 42 years ago, that it's probably a good idea for me to not think I'm smarter than God, and just to agree with everything that God says, all of his will and all of his plans. I hope you're like that as well, because it's the best life. You know, Christians and other friends of the Jewish people around the world can join with the Jewish people to celebrate Purim. In fact, the Bible kind of invites you to. I'm going to read from the book of Esther again in chapter 9, verse 27. The Jews took it upon themselves to establish the custom, and they and their descendants and all who joined them should without fail observe these two days every year in the way prescribed and at the time appointed. You're welcome. You're invited to celebrate the faithfulness of God with us on Purim. Uh, Traditionally, Jewish people do the following on Purim. You can find the exhortation for these customs in Esther chapter 9, verse 21 and 22. We read the Megillah of Esther, or the scroll. Megillah is scroll, or the book of Esther. We eat a festive meal. We give food gifts to our friends. We dress up in costumes and do Purim spiels, a spiel is a special Purim skit or play. And we, gives, and we give gifts to poor people. Now, I want to invite you to do two things in honor of the celebration of Purim for such a time as this. Number one, prayer. 
I want to ask you to pray for two things. A, I want to ask you to pray that more and more Jewish people will have a revelation that Yeshua is the promised Messiah of Israel, their Savior, the lover of their souls. And B, I want to invite you to pray against the spirit of Haman, of hatred of Jews, anti-Semitism, and anti-Israelism, as sadly, (coughs) excuse me, it continues to rear its ugly head. (coughs) Got that cold. Got a drink. Mm. Another gift from God, water. Air, water, and health. (coughs) And to help you pray, I want to suggest that you request our free prayer guide at reachii.org. That's our website for Reach Initiative International. Reachii.org. Request the prayer guide. It's free, how to pray for the Jewish people. And the second thing I'd like to ask you and invite you to uh, participate with us in Purim, is Purim's a time to give gifts for the poor, you'll recall. I I want to invite you to help us serve Holocaust survivors in Israel and Belarus that are living in poverty. You can make a generous donation to help us bless and serve Holocaust survivors while they're still with us. Please go to our website, Reach ii.org r-e-a-c-h-i-i dot org after a short break we're going to come back and I want to talk more about your purpose why you're here for such a time as this stay with me we'll be right back I'm Rabbi Stewart, and uh, in our first segment of this episode of Your Jewish Connection, we discuss the Feast of Purim, which you find the story in the Book of Esther in the Tanakh, or Old Testament. We saw how God orchestrated in the history of man and placed Esther as queen of Persia for such a time as this, and she was used by God to save her Jewish people from annihilation. You and I were also born into this world at this time for such a time as this. We have God-given purpose. Let me lay some foundations for you. If you know Yeshua, if you know Jesus, and you know that he died for your sins and rose from the dead, you have been adopted into the family of God. You are a beloved son or daughter of Abba, Father, God, the God of Israel, who's the God of heaven and earth. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says it this way. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And this is what we are. Come on, does it get any better than that? And listen to how it's expressed. Uh, John's, that was first John, that was his letter. Now in the Gospel of John, Yochanan, I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible just because it kind of adds some flavor and understanding to it. John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. And it says, to as many as did receive and welcome him, talking about Yeshua, Jesus, he gave the right, the authority, the privilege to become children of God. That is to those who believe in, adhere to, not just believe in, adhere to, trust in and rely on his name, who were born not of blood, natural conception, nor of the will of the flesh, physical impulse, nor of the will of man, that of a natural father, but of God, divine and supernatural birth. This is amazing. I mean, we are new creations when we embrace Yeshua 
as our Savior and Lord. We're new creations, and God wants to transform us by the renewing of our mind and help us to understand the great purpose that he has for all of us. And he will reveal specific purposes for each and every one of us. For example, God had a purpose for me and my wife to travel around the world and and minister to people who had never heard the good news in Belarus and Israel and India and other places around the world. But each one of us has a foundation in God that we are beloved sons and daughters. And out of that, we begin to understand our worth and our purpose. 1 John 4.11, first letter of John 4.11. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Yeshua said we should love our neighbors ourselves. We should do unto others as we'd have them do unto us, right? And so one of our purposes is to be carriers of love. God is love. I'm not talking about emotional, romantic love. I'm talking about love that serves, gives for the benefit of others. One of our purposes in life is to be carriers of love because we are recreated. We are sons and daughters of God. We are to be imitators of Yeshua, and we are to live a life of love, Ephesians chapter 5, 1 and 2. And so uh, in Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, Yeshua said it this way, and I'm reading from the message translation. It's a paraphrase, and it just just touches me the right way. I think it will to you too. Not that I don't like the other translations, but I, I really like the way this comes across. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. Yeshua is speaking, and he says, Let me tell you why you are here. We're talking about purpose, right? For such a time as this. And Yeshua says, Let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. (coughs) Excuse me, got a little cold. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. I didn't say that, Yeshua did. Here's another way to put it. Yeshua speaking, you're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this. (coughs) Excuse me. As public as a city on a hill, if I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. And now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house and be generous with your lives. So this is purpose in a world full of darkness. This is for such a time as this. In a world full of evil, hatred, confusion, sin, rebellion against God, our Heavenly Father, not just ours, but everyone's. We are called to be light and salt on this earth, bringing out the God flavors and God colors of life for others to see and experience. It's not just for us. I mean, I love experiencing the goodness of God, the truth, the love, the grace, the mercy of God, but it's not just for me, and it's not just for you. It is for you. It is for me but it's so that we would demonstrate this so that others can see and experience. And as I've said many times, to truly love someone, we need to be concerned about their everyday life situations and problems. But not only, we need to be concerned about their relationship with God and their eternal destiny. I need to be concerned about your relationship with God, your eternal destiny, and you in turn, must also for those that you have influence over. And so the truth is, 
God has brought you into this world. Again, you could have been born at any time, but you're born now for such a time as this to experience and enjoy all of his love, blessings, grace, and truth, and out of your intimate walk with Yeshua, you're a follower of Yeshua. Out of this intimate walk with Yeshua, as a beloved child of God, your great purpose is not only to shine that light, to bring his love, to become more like him, so to speak, but uh, to make disciples. Where do I get that idea from? You see, because followers or disciples of Yeshua, Jesus, are called by our King, by our Lord, to make disciples, followers of others. Of course, you don't force this on them. You do this through the power of the Holy Spirit, love, prayer, service, and so on. But listen to the words of Yeshua, <clears throat> Matthew 28, 18 and 19. And Yeshua came up to them and spoke to them, saying, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples, or followers, of all nations, immersing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Remember, we're not doing this ourselves. If I had to do this myself, I couldn't do it. I'd fail. But, you know, God will anoint your mistakes. Just go. He's with you. He will give you words. He will give you compassion. Go. A lost and dying world is waiting for you and for me. I want to close with this. At your Jewish connection, I want to impart to you the heart of God for the Jewish people. And, uh, you know, Romans 1.16 says the gospel is for the Jew first and also for the Gentile equally. And Romans 10.1 says that uh, uh, Paul, who's the apostle to the Gentiles and an, an example to you, says, my heart's desire and prayer for the people of Israel, the Jewish people, is that they would be saved. I hope that you'll join in that prayer with the apostle Paul, and I hope that you'll have this heart for the Jewish people and join with us. Ask for your pre free prayer guide on how to pray for the Jewish people at our website, reachii.org. I'm Rabbi Stewart. I look forward to being with you on the next episode of Your Jewish Connection. Until then, be blessed, be a blessing, because you are on this earth for a God purpose for such a time as this. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Avinu Malkenu, we're so grateful that we are your beloved sons and daughters. We're so grateful that uh, you never leave us or forsake us. You never fail us. Circumstances in life sometimes are not pleasant. There are people who hate, who murder, who do all kinds of evil. Nevertheless, Lord, you have called us to stand firm for justice and to bring out the God colors and the God flavors on this earth for such a time as this. Anoint us, empower us, motivate us like never before in Yeshua's name. Amen.